Whew, welcome back to Big Board. All right, I'm going to second effort at uh, starting this video and just spent a minute and a half rambling incoherently. And uh, this will be a, a less rambling, slightly more coherent version of what we're going to talk about. Panzer North Africa, GMT, you're all familiar with it. If you're not, you probably should get yourself a copy. Uh, I haven't played it yet, but I've played enough of the Panzer system to know that if you like the detailed nuance of... Armored Warfare, AFV-based warfare, then you're going to have a good time with this. And now here's what's interesting when I set these scenarios up. We've got a historical representation of 21st Panzer from the Germans uh, pushing in, surprising the 1st Armored uh, Division uh, at Gazala. I think it's 13th of June or July, one of the two, June 1942. And so uh, the, the Allies are in defensive positions. Now, what we've got to do, though, is set up our defense here. We've we get pretty much, I think it's anywhere on these two boards, these first two boards. There are three boards in the exercise. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see the full map. Apologies for the light once again. It's just a situation until we get into the house. It is what it is. So I've got shadows from the trees and all the rest of it. So uh, we're going to focus in any case on the data cards at the moment so that we can then use that to translate where we should position our two companies and then where the reinforcements that come on for the allies, where they should try and position themselves in defilade. Uh, so uh, just to recap... Looks like I've got bounced around. That's right. I was starting to put uh, starting to put the mortars out because they have a specific range and whatnot. But we've got uh, two companies here that uh, that's actually a leader. Sorry, uh, two two companies and some trucks and some port T guns, which are two pound um, two pound uh, portable. Uh, and they can use AP, uh, AP, uh, I'm sorry, AP ammo, right? That's what I'm trying to say. Gosh, today is not the day. And then we've got some reinforcements coming where we have Grants and Crusaders uh, arriving. These Grant, these uh, Crusader 2Ss are pretty crappy. Uh, probably more effective uh, pop and smoke or something. Uh, but these Crusaders are pretty nice and they can they can potentially do some damage at the right range and that's what we want to look at because where where the units are effective is where we was going to drive uh, the ranges they're effective at is going to drive where and uh, they go on the map with consideration that there's this kind of dust storm thing going on and so we've got to deal uh, deal with that for a certain number of turns that we're unfamiliar with we don't know how many turns because it's random how many turns that storm is going to last. So let's have a look. So let's start off with what I think is probably the best platform uh, for the uh, for the uh, allies. And I'm sorry if I'm being uh, slow today. It's just uh, one of those days. So hopefully that's readable here. <clears throat> We've got uh, the, the two-pounder, and it's uh, at short range, up to five hexes. Oh, sorry. Fight from uh, five hexes to uh, eight hexes or, or less than nine. Uh, we've got a penetration rate. This is the P here of 12. And why is that important? Well, we're going to see in a sec. That's, see, that's a different gun. But uh, this is uh, the, 12, the, the, two, the two pounder. So I said a penetration of 12. So let's keep that in mind. And let's look at the primary uh, uh, AFVs of the enemy. Panzer 3H. If we... Uh, have a look here. I'll probably bring this a little bit closer. Let me see if I can get this to focus. Here we go. Uh, so if I'm firing on the level, uh, sorry, what, what are we doing here? Yes, that's right. If I'm receiving fire on the level and uh, I receive a shot in my turret front, that penetration rate of 12 will penetrate here on a nine. It'll penetrate in our turret front uh, uh, on the front side or rear side, hull front, it'll still penetrate. So that makes it a viable, uh, a viable uh, piece of a platform that we would like to shoot those three F, those three H's. 
Same with the three J's. Let me uh, just show you there. Now here, I said it was a 12, right? So there's a 12. Uh, this would be a 12. So that uh, equal to or greater, I believe, is what we need. And so that will allow us to get a penetration. But look, if I turn on front, on front side, mm, no good, right? Uh, it's not going to penetrate. But it will penetrate whole front, uh, front side, front rear, uh, whole front here. So uh, also whole rear. Uh, so that is going to, that's a... I'm not going to say it's a 50-50, but now we're, we've got a little bit of chance coming into the exercise, assuming that we hit and assuming we're at that, uh, I said that we're five to uh, nine range. We've got a good chance at getting a penetration on that particular platform. Same with the 4F. Let's have a look at it now. Well, now, now uh, we also have challenges trying to hit it at the top of front, uh, top of front if it's a front side uh, angle. And uh, we'll have a look at those angles. Uh, you can look at the online rule book if you really want to see that i can find it somewhere here but uh also a good choice to get penetration All right so with that in mind let's have a look at the crusaders penetration rate so crusader 2 and this will be the other primary platform that we are wanting to be shooting bad guys with uh once again short range is going to give me a penetration of 12 but if i'm out beyond uh, nine hexes, so nine through 12 hexes, I've got a pen rate of 10 and nine, which makes that a risky shot, right? Uh, much less chance of, of penetrating, because if we look here, so we said we had a, a 12 pen at uh, five through eight. Uh, that's going to that's gonna allow us to get penetration on all these different strike zones, but not on toe in front, on the side, and then uh, a little bit... Uh, a little bit trickier with the falling, rising and falling shots. So if I can get tanks onto a hill, this is a little rise here, and I'm doing a falling shot, shooting down on them, that's going to help us a little bit here, but not by much. So pretty tough platform to uh, smack around. Uh, it's going to be difficult. Then we can see with the Panzer 3H, same sort of thing where uh, I've got uh, a pen rate of 12 and 10. So I'm going to have some decent opportunities to shoot these guys even out to medium range with the Crusader II uh, when we're trying to hit the, the Panzer 3H. I could hit them pretty much all across the board. And the last one, the 3J, 3J Lang. A tougher platform to hit with a uh, with a uh, medium range. I'm going to be uh, have to get it on the turret right if I'm shooting uh, front on. Uh, hull right might be okay. Uh, sorry, hull front, hull rear. So difficult, difficult shot for that. So primary platform, and I only got two of them. Is going to be the two pounder. That's going to give me almost a guaranteed penetration, and then it just depends on whether it's a kill or a a track or uh, some sort of damage, right? And two damages will equal a kill, knockouts and brew-ups. But uh, so that we look at that and we go, hmm, interesting. Now I've got all these uh, these infantry chaps and they've got uh, they've got an AT platform, um, this anti-tank rifle. Now we can see this penetration's uh, at, <laughs> at short range, two, point blank, range of two, pen, pen rate of six. So they're not gonna be very effective shooting tanks so that would then tell me how far how far forward do i want to have these guys and what cover uh, protective cover overwatch fire can i provide them so that they are not uh, rolled over by tanks and then the other obviously the other consideration we're going to have to deal with is that the uh, the enemy comes on board with uh, two companies of infantry in a swag bag of uh, Panzerkampf wagons, the SPWs. I think there's four different types in here in amongst all this. Uh, there's some martyrs as well. I didn't look at their armor rates because they're, they're pretty low and uh, these will probably sit back. Sorry. These guys will probably sit back and plink if they can because their short range is six hexes or 11 hexes for medium and they've got a penetration rate of 18 so they'll kill pretty much anything that they're going to shoot at i think uh generally speaking i'm looking real quick at the 
Crusaders. Yeah, they've got uh, pretty ordinary defensive factors. And of course, we also have in here somewhere an 88 millimeter gun that is going to give us, uh, it's a two centimeter flak, it's this side. Uh, the 88 millimeter obviously has stunning range, stunning penetration, and it's going to kill anything it hits uh, pretty much or at least damage it or penetrate, right? So, uh, make sure I didn't mix up those guys. So, th my point there is that with all those Panzer wagons, the, the, the half tracks coming onto the board, relatively high speed, they'll have the infantry on board. They're going to want to pull up, dismount, and try and knock these guys out. So, we've got to work out what sort of mortar protection. Uh, not That's the only indirect fire platform we have, but I can also have... Uh, the GP, the general purpose weapons, the MGs on the tanks, once they enter, uh, can take up position and pro provide some overwatch. So I may not, I may not want to be this far forward, right? I might want to be back a little bit, a little bit closer here. I don't know yet. Uh, so, so my thinking for the defense is that given that the Germans have to capture both the hills, this one and this one, off just off camera, uh, you can see it just there. Let me just adjust that. I just tightened up all the screws. Hang on a second. There we go. Capture those two hills. They need to exit nine units. Fastest way to exit is off the track here or the road, uh, depending on the condition of this thing. We'll have to have a look at that. Uh, early turns are super dusty, so everyone's starting in cautious movement. And it's actually, I think it's mandated that they use cautious movement until the, until the sandstorm lifts a little bit. So uh, we'll have to work out the exact... Uh, utilization of that rule to make sure we play it correctly but uh so that'll happen there uh, but uh, so i'm thinking that for the germans as the defender i'm thinking the germans will probably want to tackle this road and try and push a formation once the german reinforcements their armor arrives push that off the map because the whole idea here is of course the 21st panzer is trying to penetrate these defenses and go on and knock out other aspects of the uh, allied defense right so can i can i set my at atr rifle uh, uh units up here and uh plink at the tanks as they pass by can i uh provide enough uh crossfire opportunity here to hit the the infantry that's going to be coming first at me do i put two platoons or do I or sorry two squads or three squads here we don't know we've got to work that out I've got these hasty defenses that will give them some cover benefit and we've got these uh, def defilade uh, hexes that I can create in clear hexes so maybe I'm going to put maybe I'm going to put a tank a tank one up here hoping that the tanks arrive soon enough that they can participate in that exercise uh, and, and as as part of the defense so Super interesting to ponder and consider. It's one of the things I've been looking at the last uh, day or so when I have had a spare minute is where do I want to put my defenses? How do I want to position uh, the tanks when they come on? Because uh, I don't know when they're coming on necessarily. They're, it's a, a variable arrival rate based on the die roll. And uh, how, how long can this infantry hold out if the Germans are able to push up in their, their uh, half tracks with all, with all their kit? Uh, well, and the weapons that are on those half tracks are going to be devastating. So how do I adjust my defense based on what they do when they come on the board? So lots of things to think about and good, to, good stuff to noodle on. It's one of the reasons why playing these games solo, I can sit here and take all day on this if I want and come up with what ifs and consider things just because it's interesting to do versus sitting down opposed and having to make my mind up like that. Now, that's the, that's the benefit of being uh, a board war gamer. A uh, real life commander would have to make those decisions based on what he could hear on the battlefield and see on the battlefield and then make a judgment call as to whether that was the primary uh, threat, and primary advance, uh, or whether it was a, a feint. You know? So anyway, lots of fun stuff. Kind of a long video. Sorry about that. But uh, I just find this stuff super interesting. And I love, uh, I love doing the comparative analysis on the, on the platforms. Uh, it's all, all good stuff. All right. Go roll some dice, folks. Talk to you soon.